Hi, I'm Tim Belcher. Welcome back to the channel. A while ago on this channel, I made this leather wallet. It was a design to build video where I started with a template and went all the way through the build. And I did all of this on the Cricut Maker. Not only did I use the Maker to cut it out, but I used the Maker to pin draw the design into it. Well, today I want to remake this, but I want to do it completely on the laser. And I also want to use our lake art. So this is more lake art with lasers, a laser etched leather wallet. This is how I made it. I'm not going to go into any of the graphics work in this video. If you're interested in the graphics, please check out the last two videos uh, in my Lake Art with Lasers series. The first video I go through one step-by-step -step method on how to make these lake maps. And in the second, I modify that art to laser etch these tumblers. And as always, links are in the description down below. I'm going to start this build by grabbing a couple of 12 inch squares from this Kipskin Veg Tan Leather. I say a couple of squares because I'm relatively sure I'm going to mess something up. This hide is beautiful. It's super thin. They say two to three ounce and I'm betting closer to two. It's clean. It's soft. It's really nice to work with. Though that clean soft texture is going to give me fits later in the build. I'm going to take a cutoff to do some testing on. Even though I have relatively good settings for leather from previous work, I've not used this type of veg tan. So I want to test my grayscale settings in Lightburn. And as you may have seen on this channel before, that involves me running this simple little pattern of shaded circles through at various speeds and feeds, or in the case of lasers, speeds and laser power. And you can see that my first test uh, was really not good. This leather is really sensitive. So I adjust my max power down and my minimum power up just a bit and give it another shot, which is better, but still not what I want. Third time the max looks okay, or the dark looks okay, but the min or the light is too low. This last one is just about right. And for me, at 300 millimeters a second, the max power is just over 10% and the minimum is just over 8.5%. So it's a super tight range. I didn't show you here, but I also tested my cut settings and my air assist settings and dialed those in as well. So it's time to let the laser do its thing. For this first attempt, I did not change much of the graphics. I rearranged and resized them to get them to fit the wallet pattern. I also made the graphics at twice the size of the wallet template so that when I shrunk them to fit, I hoped it would provide a higher resolution and provide some finer detail. I think to some degree that worked, but I want to go back and really dive deep into the DPI capabilities of this laser, so I'm going to save that for a later video. I'm not sure you get the scale of the wallet, but it's very small only six inches across when it's open. And I'm already noticing that while I like the detail, much of the text is not really readable at this size. The logo looks great though. I will do a very light etch around the wallet to mark a stitching guide and then cut out the shapes. And we have all the pieces for our wallet. I thought the detail looked great. I did need to clean up the smoke stains from the laser and that's how I immediately messed this one up. Give it a watch. I used a little isopropyl alcohol and proceeded to stain and smear the soot across these pieces like it was my job to do so. The more I tried to clean it up, the worse I made it. Once that soot touched this nice, clean, soft leather, it was done. At some point, I realized I should have pulled off the cutoff. There was really no reason to be cleaning the part I would be throwing away, but the damage was already done at that point. I actually tried off camera to clean these pieces with various soaps and water, and maybe I made them a little better. This was fairly late at night, and I actually went to bed that night thinking this simply wasn't gonna work out. I woke up the next morning and thought, let's try this again. The plan this time wasn't fully thought out either, but it did start with, let's be more careful. I adjusted the dark or max power down just a bit, hoping to get less soot, and I also removed the road names since you couldn't really read them anyway. And I moved the facts about the lake to one of the pockets. For cleaning, I first moved the scrap away. And then I simply used a wet paper towel, just water, and spent some time dabbing at the leather to try and lift the soot rather than smear it. 
and for the most part, this actually worked well, though I did notice that some of the detail was not as clear with a lower dark setting. I actually did this twice, and you can see some of what I was able to remove on the towel. This time, I let the water try and do the work, and I only used alcohol to gently try and remove any soot from the edges, and I tried my best to only touch the leather in the center of each piece. You may notice I only did the parts I didn't think would be reasonable to mask, so I masked the rest of that leather blank and cut out the other patterns for the wallet. This is the difference between handling it carefully and handling it uh, incorrectly. Look how dirty and smudged that one looks compared to one that I just really took my time on and was careful not to touch the face. Same with the, the pockets after the mask. Again, that staining would have gone right through whatever dye I applied. And that dye was a navy blue. And I don't know why, I think it was just something I wanted to try. There wasn't much more thought than lake blue. And overall, this was a weird project for me. There were several points that I just didn't like my own choices. And this was one of those moments. The original plan was to make the entire wallet blue, but as I applied it, the darker dye really took some of that contrast away from the etching. It made, for instance, the lake facts really hard to read with that thin font I had chosen. As I applied the acrylic top coat, some of the contrast did return, and I was left with a muted, but I thought fairly cool looking map. But again, it was lacking some of the detail, both because of the color stain and the changes I had made to those laser settings. On a whim, I decided to see what a brown stain would do to that first attempt I had made. And you can see here, I was able to clean that up just a little bit beforehand. And it looked good. It certainly kept more of that detail. So I made some changes and made a third set. I chose a better, bolder font for the text and increased the power of the laser slightly. Then I had a choice for the outside of the wallet, blue or brown. I decided I'd go brown and just continue with the project. I had the previous blue one I could use if I decided to go all blue. And if not, I'd use the brown outside with a blue inside. I'd be curious what others think here, but my focus group of my wife and kids chose the brown. I also tried here to give it a little bit of a treasure map feel. And this was another one of those times where I wasn't happy with my choice. To me, it looked a little splotchy at first, and I really didn't like it until it had dried. I did skive my edges to make the wallet thinner, actually with a couple of tools, but this leather was already very thin and it ended up more like shaving it than cutting it. And now another one of those choices, or perhaps a learning opportunity. I had purchased this clear Gorilla Glue because someone on a forum somewhere recommended it as being easier than traditional barge or rubber cement. I found it actually harder to apply smoothly. It came out clumpy and was hard to control, and I doubt I'll use it again. And now on to my favorite part, trying not to screw everything up with poor stitching. I need to stitch the inside edges of the pockets first before attaching them to the wallet. And I took my time and made sure that not only was I following the line, but that I was punching straight down so my inside and outside holes would appear straight. Doing the pockets first also seems to serve as a bit of a warm-up for the much more visible outside stitch work. And I have to say, watching this back, I stitch much better in fast forward. I'm still very new to this, and I just take my time. This is, after all, only my second wallet and my third leather project overall. I backstitched over the top area where those pockets will get the most stress, and then tried to seat the thread down a bit into the leather. Then it was a rinse and repeat on the second, though I needed to stitch this one from the top to the bottom to keep the same orientation for me. I am getting better at finishing my edges. It's just sandpaper, some water, and a burnishing tool, and some patience, and eventually this is followed with some tokenol. I'm only showing a small portion of this. For each edge, I probably spent about 15 minutes total. And finally, I apply some brown edge paint to the inside edges of the pockets. Once dry, they were ready to attach to the blank. Okay, it's come to decision time, and I think I'm gonna go with the brown and the contrast. This is the outside of the wallet. 
So it will look something like this. But I'm not happy with that unfinished section of leather in the middle. It doesn't look uh, good, to put it bluntly. And I could slick it back with something, maybe even like tokenol, and make it a bit slicker, or I could add a liner. And I have this piece, this scrap of chrome tan leather that I got from an Amazon scrap package. And I could do something like cut that piece and make it a liner and that looks a lot better, a lot more professional. But then I thought, I've got this one that I'm not gonna use, this one that just had a little too much detail, looks a little bit dirtier. But after I finished it, it actually looks quite nice. I thought, why not use it as a liner? And then I would have something like this. So that's what I did. I used some Super 77 spray-on adhesive for this. And even though I tried my best to get the edges perfect, it did need a small amount of cleanup and sanding afterwards. And then I attached the pockets to the outer portion of the wallet. And for those keeping score, this is now the third type of glue I've used in this wallet for some reason. And this is just barge painted on with a small brush to be more precise. And all of this could have and usually is done with just simple contact cement. And with barge at this step, you really do get one shot to get it right, or at least right enough that sanding will clean up your mistakes. I mentioned a few times that I didn't like many of my choices for this project. And in fact, up until this point, I really wasn't happy with how this was turning out. Maybe it was just a series of small disappointments that were piling up. But something happened right about this point where suddenly the wallet looked really nice. I stopped worrying about the little things and took a step back and really liked how it was turning out. And that happens sometimes during a build. Sometimes it takes the project coming together at the end to make you appreciate it. At least that's what happened here. This concept of digital first, or taking the time to get the art right, and then using it in different projects is really intriguing to me. The first wallet I made, I did so using the Cricut Maker and used the pins to draw a design on the leather. In fact, this wallet could have been done that way as well. Using the laser for this project was really just another way to lay that artwork down on the piece. I do think the laser provided a way to get a finer, more detailed image into the leather. And in the end, it does sort of look like a treasure map. All that matters is that I like it. It's unique unique both to me and unique to the artwork that it's based on. The digital side has worked too, and this just makes that investment more worthwhile. I've got a few more projects using this lake art knocking around in my head, so if you like this video or this entire series, give this one a like and please hit that subscribe button. It really helps. Thanks for watching.